Hi, this is Isabel Florence and you are listening to You Are Light Podcast, a safe space where we talk about mental health and well-being. Hello lovely, welcome back to the You Are Light Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the impermanence of life. Sometimes things happen around us that um, open our eyes in some way. This is a subject that sometimes I get taken back towards, but most of the time I am unaware of. Most of the time it seems inexistent. It escapes my reality. So I want to take some time today to remind you of it, to maybe bring some of your awareness towards it and remember what it is that can positively change in your life because of it, because of our awareness towards it. Life is impermanent we will all die. The awareness of death in our lives only becomes present when we experience its existence. And as a young person, my awareness of the finite reality of life only shows up when I see young people die. When someone near me who is either around my age or younger than me dies or suffers something so intense that threatens their health, threatens their life. The presence of moments like this in life, I think, can change our perspective immensely. The difficulty is in keeping that perspective that we have found through these experiences present in our lives. So what is the positive aspect of reminding ourselves that we're all going to die? I think the most life-changing realization is the understanding of our true priorities and the letting go of the small annoyances, the small worries, the small stresses in life. When we are faced with the reality that we will all die at some point and not necessarily when we are old but possibly when we're young, we might choose to spend our time in a different way. How would you live today if you knew you had a terminal disease? If you knew that you would die soon? We end up, for some reason, prioritizing relationships. For some reason, I let go of the differences that I have with people in my family. And I have a deep want to connect. For some reason, the things that we carry in our lives as worries or stress as a result of what we've been told rather than as a result of what is true in our nature is released. Ideas of what someone should look like, what kind of success they should achieve, the need of approval from people that are not even important to you. These things just go away when we understand how fickle, how delicate life can be. We also become in a way more aware of our choices, aware of the possibility of suffering presence in our lives when we make specific choices, when you decide to be vulnerable and attach to people. The remembering that these people might die is quite painful. And at the same time, shows you how much you should every day tell them how much you love them, show them how much you love them, take time to spend your present moment with them. In a way, it allows me to let go of what other people might want for me, what other people might believe my life should look like or should be like. It allows you to, in a way, become more selfish with your choices, which I believe is quite healthy. (laughs) And at the same time, it makes you want to positively affect the people surrounding you. Because as I said before, the big differences that you feel you have with people seem actually small when you understand that you both have in common the fact that you will both die one day you both have in common the fact that you might lose people that you love, then you might not decide to start an argument surrounding politics. (laughs) Because it seems a waste of time. I think that's the thing that happens when we become aware or we remember 
to become aware of the impermanence of life. It's the value that we give to our time. The way we spend our time becomes the center of our reality. And the fears that we have for some reason become smaller because the biggest fear is death, right? When you know that it's coming, then the other fears have less power over you. The fear of being judged, the fear of seeming silly or even the fear of failure. Especially the fear of failure, right? Because you're not here for that long. So if you fail, who cares? The people that remember your failure will also die. <laughs> There's something so beautiful about all this. And at the same time, so dark. We are the only animals that are aware of the reality of our future, that life is finite, that our life will end. So what do we do? We subconsciously try to deny that reality. We try to deny death by striving to achieve something that we hope will not die, a life that is significant. We hope to create a legacy so to deny death so that death is not your final destiny. Sometimes I have this desire to create something grandiose, something huge, something recognized as a legacy. It is coming from my wish to never die. Your ego wants to keep itself alive no matter what. The funny thing is that this pursue for a legacy might in the world that we live today result in huge success but will it result in fulfillment will it result in a meaningful life a joyous life the life that you actually want to live deep down it will probably make your life more stressful more filled with anxiety. It might actually take you away from the present moment more often than not. It might take you away from your life. <laughs> it might take you away from living your life. This denying of your death, this pursuit for a legacy. The thing is that by recognizing our impendent death, we recognize our insignificance and this can be very beautiful and very expanding mind expanding because by understanding your insignificance you understand the insignificance of your thoughts of your problems of your worries it allows you to understand the magnitude of the universe this magnitude shows you your insignificance and small nature in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes me and my boyfriend, we go to the beach and we look at the stars at night. And he always says that there is something about it that allows him to quiet his mind and just accept the small nature of his being. That can feel so relaxing. It's a release. It also reminds us of how mysterious life is, the presence of our death. It allows us to understand how much we do not know, how much we do not understand. It means we hold the knowledge that we have with less of a tight grip. And this again allows us to connect to those around us more deeply because you are not attaching yourself to the things you believe you know. We know very little. <laughs> and that for me is such a, such a relief. I don't have to go for this search of trying to hold it all in my mind. All of the answers, they will never belong to me. And even if they did, when I die, they will also be released. Awareness of this impermanence of our lives also allows us to surrender. That is the only thing that we can do is to trust whatever it is that is beyond us. Whatever that thing is that holds that knowledge that we do not have. 
one day we will die and we will release the self that we believe is our true self. What happens when you let go of all the identities you have created for yourself, all the attachments that you have built in your life? What is it that is present within you, that was present within you when you were born? Not the things that you have built, but the thing that you are. What is that? So by reminding that we will die, we can also try to bring some of that surrendering that will happen to our lives right now. Surrendering of the things that we have created in our lives. Remembering the thing that we are. The true being that is not influenced by everything around it. And we can only be who we are, who we truly are, when our mind stops. So by meditating every day, we slowly release, we slowly trust, and we slowly remember our insignificance. We live in the present, so to live every moment of this life before it's gone. Because one day something will happen and your life will be gone. And we don't know what will happen then. Whether that self that is your true self will stay alive in some form, energetically, and travel somewhere else. But what we can know is that we cannot fight this reality. Not by creating a legacy, not by holding on to our identity, and not by making small things in our lives into these huge monsters. Life is finite, it will end one day, and I never want to forget this. And I know I will, but I'll have to keep coming back to this awareness every time I am faced with death. It might seem like a heavy episode, but it's actually very light. And I see this topic as very liberating. And I hope you do too. I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you spend this week focusing on the things that you would prioritize if you knew you would die soon. Remembering your beautiful insignificance and surrendering to the answers we do not have. I love you very much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. All the links are written down on the show notes, as well as resources for anyone struggling with their mental health. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when we release new episodes. Also, feel free to share our podcast with your friends and family. And if you'd like to get involved, explore our content or support our work, visit our website, www.ourlight.earth. That's Y-O-U-R, light.earth. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at u.r.light. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.